slight confession, I'm actually shooting Aperture Priority. Oh no, <laughs> a lot of you rave about Aperture Priority and um, I'm full up, full full manual shooter normally. I don't just don't get on with uh, auto settings at all. I just rather know what my camera is doing. But um, because we're going into different sort of bright and dark, bright and dark, I thought I'd just Aperture Priority, keep it simple. And I'm still back button focusing. So just keeping it on the histogram. I've got my camera set so that it knows the slowest shutter speed is gonna be one 250th of a second. So I haven't got to worry about that. All I need to worry about is my aperture, my depth of field, where I'm focusing. And of course, I'm a histogram. Make sure the histogram exposure is good. How cool is this? I love this place. Love this place. Absolutely. Tenby Harbour. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous place. Oh, were you, were you, you, you up for sunrise? Did you see the sunrise this morning? Yeah. You were sat there, were you? No, I was around, I was around the, uh, watching the dog. Oh, really? Oh, you, oh, so you were up. We were up on the bank over there doing, um, taking photographs at sunrise. It was lovely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, lovely to see you both. Anyway, thank you so much. Cheers. Enjoy your stay. Good morning and welcome to Tenby. Tenby Harbour to be specific, it's absolutely gorgeous here. Um, I'm here to do some street photography though this morning me and my mate Dave were up on the bank over there doing some seascape photography while well, attempting to. I had my Nikon and I accidentally forgot my XQD card so I couldn't actually do much in the way of, uh, of, la of landscape photography this morning. So yeah, I thought I'd make up for it and try and do some st uh, street photography around Tenby. And I've never done it. It's a really, really pretty place. So there's lots of characters, uh, lots of people hopefully now starting to come back into Tenby as well. So yeah, on a bright, bright sunny day like this, it's really, really difficult to beat Tenby. It's absolutely stunning. So yeah, hopefully gonna find some nice detail shots. We've got the fantastic harbour just there as well, which it really, it really is a uh, perfect place for looking for details and stuff. So yeah, I've got my Fujifilm X-T4 with a 35mm prime lens on there. So that's a 50mm equivalent on a full frame. So yeah, I'm just going to look for details. And, but what I want you to do is I want you to pause the photographs as we go through. Pause the photographs, really scrutinise them. Don't just look at them and think, okay, that's just somebody walking through a shadow. That's just somebody sitting there at a cafe. That's somebody doing this. Like, really pause it, look at the photograph and then rip them to bits. Don't worry about being polite. Don't worry about offending me. You don't learn anything by being polite. And I want you to be able to use this technique then when you analyze your photographs. So I want you to pause the photographs. Let me know in the comments which ones you think works, which ones you think were crap. It doesn't matter. I'm not gonna be offended. Let me have it, both barrels. Just as long as we can look at the photographs afterwards, I think hopefully we'll get one or two that we really like. But if there's some that are crap, let me know in the comments why you don't like about what you don't like about the image, what you do like about the image. But it needs to be obvious why I've taken them shots. So if you don't see any image that they're interested in or any reason why I've taken them shots, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna go before he wrecks the audio. <laughs> then pulls down there. We need to get down there. Though. Go go and have a look at them reflections. I bet they're amazing of the boats. It comes to something, if the best shot I think I've got so far is of him reflecting in that water. It was a R and L I life life uh, spit it out lifeboat thing came came past and I couldn't get the camera off my freaking hood and I couldn't get it couldn't get the flip screen out. I missed a sitter of a shot absolutely kicking myself of this lifeboat going past reflecting in the so Oh well, I do get annoyed. I get probably too annoyed with myself when I miss shots like that. Especially when it's so easy, it's just a reflection like. Ah oh well. Not at all, mate, not at all. <laughs> I'm in the way. <laughs> Hello, you. Hello. Hello. 
Oh, hello. Oh, you might hello. Chew that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't believe she's attempting to push that through there. You can't walk through it. So while well, you can see him, well, that's ten of these walrus on the end of there. We can't. And that's why there's a ton of people standing there with cameras. Because <laughs> of the walrus. I love the picture. I thought you were talking to me in love. I have, yeah, yeah, the both of you. <laughs> you can see the resemblance as you well. the third one today. What, to take a picture? Can I have a smile as well? Is that right? <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, it's great. That's a wonderful picture. Thank you so much. Have a great day. So any minute now that bird's gonna swipe down and lick a chip, isn't he? <laughs> I'll take a picture of him up there while you're having your chips. No problem. What, 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 he is, he's gonna come down and lick a chip. <laughs> This looks really cool. Love that green, love that pink, and the that light there in the shadow looks absolutely brilliant. Um, it's not probably not gonna allow me. But when you come in back in here. You get this lovely wall frame in it, but is it just another walkway shot? Is it just a standard? That's overexposing now, but it looks really, really cool as a portrait. We were sat enjoying the view over Tenby Harbour and this seagull took a liking to my sandwich so I thought I'd have a bit of fun and plonked a bit of bread on the end of this metal railing pre-focused, put my shutter speed to uh, a thousandth of a second, obviously pushed the histogram to the right with the aperture and the ISO and I didn't think it was going to happen so I wish I'd uh, got the composition a little bit better and actually give it a bit more patience so when he did come round I could have got a better shot. No, I give up. Aperture priority is definitely not for me. I'll give it a couple of hours and I just found that, especially when I was going, if, if you're walking down there and it's nice and bright and constant kind of exposure, you get on perfectly with it. But because I was going from exposing in the shade and then outside again, I just, I was constantly looking at my histogram and making sure that I wasn't clipping because with average priority, unless you're using something like spot metering and then you can point the camera to a bright area, lock it in and then recompose, I just felt that it was easier and so much more sort of fun and I could relax a lot more just shooting in manual. I just, uh, yeah, especially when I've only got one hand because I've got this camera as well. It's just so much easier just to lock the camera in manual exposure, lock the exposure into exactly what I want. And the, the exposure isn't changing today because it's a really, really bright day. So yeah, just, uh, I know a lot of you guys absolutely love aperture priority and it might suit a lot of, a lot of different, uh, styles of photography but definitely not street photography for me i did try it uh just, <laughs> just not getting on with it because i just like to know that when i get back and look at my photographs that every single one of them is going to be exposed it might be crap <laughs> it might be that it's a bad photograph but i need to know that the photograph is going to be exposed sharp in focus and aperture privacy was just uh, yeah just that extra hassle of keeping my eye on the histogram all the time and then adjusting the compensation dial just all the time it's just all the time i just uh yeah not for me
right then, so how do you think we got on? Did we, did we take any pictures that were worth taking? Because it's interesting, looking back at these shots, we were taking about three weeks ago now, I was just talking to Dave, and um, looking back at it, it's, it, it's, it's interesting because at the time when I took them, I thought they were interesting, but looking back now, some of them I really don't think are so interesting. So yeah, at the time, you always think the pictures are interesting, so go back, look through your old images and think, do you know what, why did I take that photograph? It must have been interesting at the time, not so, <laughs> so sure at the minute. So yeah, even three weeks later, one or two of these photographs had happily been, but yeah. What we'll do is have a look at all these photographs and uh, in a, probably another video, um, and, but do let me know in the comments which photographs you think worked best. Um, but before I say any more, I just want to point out that if you're a subscriber to F8 magazine, which is my street photography magazine, if you're a subscriber to F8, you should have had an email to say this has now gone quarterly. So issue six will be coming out very soon, uh, but F8 has gone quarterly purely because I'm obviously trying to push and save my business because uh, being a, a commercial photographer, current times is very difficult because nobody will commit to having you around to take a photograph. So yeah. Uh, but if you haven't heard of F8, it's absolutely fantastic. It's a really, really interesting resource. It's got some lots of um, part of the community. You can have your f images feature in the magazine. Um, it's got two interviews and obviously the backstory behind the um, the images as well. Particularly proud of this one because it's got. Uh, two fantastic interviews. Phil Penman, who's a photographer from New York, really, really amazing photographer. So I'm super, super pleased. Check out his Instagram. He's an amazing photographer. And then the other chap that's in it, if I get the right place. The other photographer is Stephen Churcher. So a really, really interesting photographer because he's, his, his style of photography is so varied. So yeah, a bit about the photographer and obviously what he found interesting in his approach to photographs. So yeah, super proud of issue five. Wonderful book. And Gavin Prest, Priest at the front as well as well. Absolutely fantastic image as well. So yeah. Um, yeah, so aperture priority. Right? So some of the images I took were fine. Like the first, very first image I took, absolutely fine because it's just an easy, easy... I was on, um, I don't like aperture priority. I'm gonna to get to it, I'm gonna spit it out, right? This is, I'm on evaluative or something. It's gonna do a, an exposure average on the entire scene, okay? So I'm not in manual and I always shoot manual and I thought I'd try aperture priority, just felt like being lazy to be honest with you. Um, and I regretted it straight away. So I gave it, I lasted about an hour. Now, some scenes like this one, I know the camera's not going to have a problem because there's nothing black really in the photograph. So it's going to sort of look at that and think, oh, it should be on average that color, 20% gray. It should be around about that color. So if this camera sees anything that's that color, only that color, it will darken it to that color. And the same as if you're photographing something that's black like this wall uh, or dark like this wall, instead of it being dark like that, the camera, if it's in full auto, will try and turn it um, to that, <laughs> which is going to cruci crucify all your highlights and all your shadows and everything like that, so uh, all your whites. So I like manual because I can look at my histogram and I can decide what I want the photograph to look like. So aperture priority takes away that. It means I can choose my depth of field, but I have to keep an eye on the rest of the camera settings to make sure it's not going to bugger up my shutter speed and my uh, my ISO, and then it's going to crush and mess everything around. So there was a few photographs that worked fine. That one worked fine. Now this one, when I took it, I was worried because of the white hat. It did clip above the frame. So this is a bit of a crop down above um, from, from where that lamp is. But the black, because it's so close to the camera, I was worried that the black jacket was actually going to be a bit of a problem. If I was on spot metering, I think I'd have had a problem here because he's too close to the center and I think the spot medium would have picked up his black jacket, which would have been massively overexposed. The ISO would have gone up through the roof. I'd have lost all them highlights and all the grays and everything. The white hat would have been disappeared. So things like that are going through my mind when I'm taking the shot and I obviously had to be looking at my settings, looking at my histogram. I knew what my settings should have been if I was manual, so I had an idea of where the camera should have been anyway. Most of the time, I think the Fuji did absolutely fine. I, I got halfway through the shoot and thought, no, I can't risk it. I'll get to that in a minute. But um, yeah, I think aperture priority for me, when I look at other people in the in the Facebook, my Facebook group, uh, if, you, if you're not a member of that, feel free to join there. Um, when I look at their settings, I say, well, what, what was your camera settings? You say aperture priority. What was your aperture? F8. Well, what was your shutter speed? Don't know. And you look at the photograph thinking, it's clearly got, it's clearly missed focus still, but the, the, the motion blur means that what was your ISO? Oh, it was probably about 200 because we we're in daylight. Well, if you'd doubled your ISO or tripled your ISO and tripled your shutter speed, you'd have had that photograph frozen. 
you know so when you're shooting an aperture priority there's nothing wrong with it as long as you know what the rest of your triangle your exposure triangle so you've got your aperture at the top and you've got your um, shutter speed and your iso down here it's, we won't go into whether or not it should be an uh, exposure triangle and there's a lot of people that think it shouldn't actually be a triangle i know that and i, I get your point <laughs> aperture priority if you're looking at your aperture at 5.6 you need to know what the other valuables are, uh, variables are doing and you need to know what your histogram is doing so the histogram you need to know what that's doing if it's if, if, if you've got something white in the scene your histogram needs to be to the right don't believe this crap about a histogram needing to be in the middle. It's nonsense. You need to know what your histogram is doing. I did do a video on it ages ago. I'll put a link up there, but if I need to do a new version of that and modernize it a little bit. But the histogram is really, really important. You need to know what it's doing and you need to know what the rest of your exposure triangle is doing if you're shooting in aperture priority. We've got a manual car and an automatic car. Now, when we go downhill in the automatic car, the revs go and I have to manually override the gearbox and put it in a higher gear because the car, the car thinks it should be in second every time it goes down a hill but the rev counter is what tells me that it's doing this stupid thing i don't know why i know a lot of cars do it but um, because i understand how to drive a manual car shoot manually i can control an automatic car aperture priority by overriding the gearbox by compensating the camera but i've got to understand what the rest of the camera is doing i need to say car then I've got to understand what the rest of the camera's doing. If, if I'm shooting a shot and somebody's running through and I'm at aperture priority, I need to look at the bottom of the camera through the viewfinder and go, please be at 250th of a second, please be at 500th of a second, please be at 1,000th of a second. Because if I'm not, and I'm not aware what the camera's doing, then aperture priority and the histogram, are, well, just don't do it because <laughs> you're wrecking shots you're just missing shots but anyway i'll leave it there let me know in the comments which of the photographs you think sucked there's a few there i really really do like but yeah um aperture priority for, aperture priority for me if you're shooting somewhere like this is absolutely no worries whatsoever yeah i still think you would have had to use compensation just to bring the histogram to the right so you're not ruining the raw file later on in post but yeah it's just i mean Shots like this, there's no way aperture priority for me would have worked because it's a dark scene. Uh, the guy walking past who happens to be Dave, and I'm really gutted it's Dave because I thought it was a candid, more candid. It was candid, but I thought it was a, an anonymous figure um, when I took the shot. But um, as he walks past, aperture priority, if it wasn't metered correctly, perhaps spot metering or something, I don't know. What would aperture priority have done? I'd have had to use my compensation dial, dial it down to make sure it's like minus two or something like that, just to make sure that I'm not clipping the highlights in the background. But how are you going to know that when you're taking the photograph? Well, you've got to use your histogram and you've got to know what your camera settings are doing. Anyway, I will leave it there because this was supposed to be a short video and um, it's probably gone on too long anyway. <laughs> right. Thanks for watching and uh, yeah, do check out F8 Magazine. Um, yeah, do check out this. I'm really, really proud of it. And uh, yeah, the next one, if you're subscribed, will be out with you very, very soon. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Take care.